Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. Um, I've been a little bit slow, <laughs> a little bit slow in the uptake getting some videos out. I, I, I'll have an update about that. I, I, I was sabotaged so uh, I'm gonna have to share the details on that I suppose. Um, but my other studio <laughs> sets, um, live studio audience, uh, are, are still being set up kind of right now. Um, so, you know, this will be my pretty much standard plug side chat um, <laughs> location, uh, you know, until morale improves, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, what what I wanted to talk about today was... Well, I know we have a lot of information about, oh, the grid will never take um, a full transition to electric vehicles. And I have some more thoughts on it beyond just this video uh, because, you know, gas cars also have what I would refer to as a long, long tailpipe, meaning that there's actually a lot of energy and electricity specific infrastructure required uh, just to keep gas cars fueled. Uh, so this might be maybe maybe a multi-part series on why the grid can actually handle a 100% transition uh, to EVs uh, despite what the naysayers might say. Now, that's not saying that this wouldn't require some minor adjustments, of course, but uh, I wanted to call one of those minor adjustments out today. And it's interesting because I was, I was operating, I think, on some dated information at one point in time where, uh, according to the information, I saw Americans drive about a trillion miles a year, just a trillion miles a year. So, <laughs> um, but apparently that was dated and apparently it's actually something like 3.2 trillion miles now, which is crazy because my original point <laughs> was that if it were only a trillion miles a year, we could actually make the transition to a hundred percent electric with the flip of a switch. So what I wanted to show you, and um, <laughs> uh, here, here, here's great value, so you know it's Walmart, but these LED lights, right? So I know that there's been, there was for a while a mandate to move towards them and a mandate to move away from them uh, or whatever, we're back to incandescent bulbs or whatnot. But the problem is these alone are basically enough to save the average American power to the point that they could drive their electric vehicle just with the difference. Um, and so what do I mean by that? So based on the numbers that I've seen, if you go with a conservative estimate that the average EV uses about three miles per kilowatt hour plug to wheel, right? Uh, if round trip efficiency. Yes, we know there are a lot of EVs that are less efficient than that, but there are also a lot of EVs that are more efficient in that than that. And I would argue that they actually tend to be the ones that are driven the most, um, you know, <laughs> just owing to that efficiency, right? They, they get better range and they get driven more frequently because they cost less to drive. Uh, so I, I would say that that three miles per kilowatt hour is a good safe average across the fleet, though I would love to see what that number actually works out to, uh, corrected by actual populations of the different EVs, right? So you, know, you don't have nearly as many two kilo mile per kilowatt hour uh, Chevy Silverado EVs as you have four mile per kilowatt hour Tesla Model 3s, right? So I think those things uh, maybe balance out in a different way. But the point was that just the energy that we use to light our homes could actually power most of those miles. And even though, like I said, that number that I saw seems to have been corrected upward, it's now over like 3 trillion miles driven. Uh, 
now when you look at the average person, right, not the outliers that are maybe driving 100, 150, 200,000 miles a year, we're looking at the individuals who on average are driving 15,000 miles a year per household. Suddenly, you can make the switch to electric just by going to a more efficient light bulb. This is where I'll talk about the LED technology a little bit and why <laughs> Americans kind of got screwed a little bit too. Really what you're looking at is in the amount of light that the, that's being emitted, you're talking about lumens, right? And so a standard incandescent bulb, uh, a hundred watt bulb will produce, will use a hundred watts to produce a certain amount of lumens and I guess about 1600 right like that's that's what they're aiming for with with these these bulbs is the equivalent of a 1600 lumens so it's a hundred watts to produce 1600 lumens or um, that would be what is it a 16 lumens per watt right so that's a, a way you can look at it as far as consumption is concerned uh, but when you look at these, now this is a 13 watt consumption for a very basic cheap LED that lasts 18 years in theory. The, there's more that goes into the lifespan of LEDs and a lot of people have LED bulbs that die early. And part of the reason for that is if you're using them outdoors or in an area with high humidity, they need to be rated as an indoor outdoor bulb otherwise that humidity will kill the led bulb much faster than it would normally you're back down to having a similar lifespan to an incandescent bulb as you can see now you've you've changed this equation quite a bit to to where you're well over a hundred lumens per watt so you're getting the same lighting but with a far lower power output. And, you know, this has another side benefit. I'll, I guess I'll kind of mention it here is, you know, my, my dad nearly burned, <laughs> burned down one of our sheds because he put 100 watt incandescent light bulbs into a little socket for the light bulb that was only rated for a 60 watt light bulb. So he needed the light that a 100 watt light bulb could produce, but the socket itself couldn't support that power flow. You could actually put multiple of these right because it's only drawing 13 watts you could actually have the equivalent of two 100 watt light bulbs running out of a 60 watt socket and not run into any problems in fact you would be running on half the electricity uh, and, and so one of the reasons why these leds are more efficient it's a light emitting diode is because there's less waste heat right so I've had some of these bulbs and even the 100 watt equivalent running for hours and hours and hours, flipped the switch off and unscrewed it and it was warm to the touch, but that was it. You can't do that. You will burn yourself on an incandescent bulb because it's wasting so much heat. Um, so that is a use case if you want to continue using um, incandescent is say you have a shed or something that needs to stay warm one way that you can do that is to use light bulbs so that it generates a little bit of excess heat that keeps the the room inside um, warm so if you're lacking some sort of a heater or whatnot it is one way of of taking advantage of that otherwise wasted heat but if you don't need the heat right just use 13 watts to generate the same 1600 lumens uh, that you could get with 100 watts um, and just for you know I'll, I'll, I'll defer to the math nerds because I'm not going to be able to do all of the percentages in my head uh, but I think it was something like 85 percent less power and this is kind of where I was getting to is Transitioning from incandescent to LED, the average American home, that 9,000 kilowatt hours a year that you're saving, that more than equals the amount of energy that your car would take to even drive 
uh, 30,000 miles. But the other thing I wanted to say too is America has kind of gotten screwed with the, what I would call the hyper efficient LEDs. And it really is outside of the upfront cost, a win-win. So Walmart occasionally does carry these, um, but this is one of the Philips's more hyper efficient bulbs that for a hundred watts, you're now only drawing 8.5 watts so you get that 16 well and this is saying 1540 lumens so it is slightly slightly dimmer than these these are 1600 um, but you're actually using um, four and a half watts less so um, not quite not quite half but you're cutting it by a significant margin below so if you're someone whose household was already making that transition two more efficient bulbs, you can get even more efficient LEDs now. And the, the most efficient LED bulbs that you can get are still hard to get here. They're like the ultra high efficiency ones. Um, and, and they are actually producing over 200 lumens per watt. So a hundred kil uh, a hundred watt equivalent bulb is drawing less than eight watts and a six a 60 watt equivalent is something like three three and a half so i also have like these are some of the older just general purpose ones again um this is the 60, 60 watt equivalent. So if you don't need the 100, and they are cheaper, of course, uh, 800 lumens. So basically half of what a 100 watt light bulb is listed at. Um, and then these ones take an actual nine watts. Uh, but this is where I was saying uh, opportunities for real improvement are these more efficient. And, and they say these are our most energy efficient LED bulbs from Philips. I can tell you for a fact that that's a lie. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're more efficient ones just aren't available in, in America. So if you're in Europe and you've been able to smuggle them in, maybe you, you can comment on them. Or if you're in the Middle East where they actually contracted for them, I believe it was Saudi Arabia that contracted with Philips. Um, I like I said, I believe the 60 watt equivalent are like three watts is the actual draw. And so it's like some un crazy, like 220, 230 lumens uh, per watt. Uh, but again, this is literally half the draw of this for actually these are 810 lumens. So even even a brighter bulb than the 60 watt. So there's a lot of these options around. And then one of the things that I think is interesting about it and it's how you get the more efficiency in the LED and why the LED um costs more but then is even longer lasting right because these ones talk about having i think somewhere somewhere they talk about it oh a, a 45 year lifespan so as long as they're kept in an environment that doesn't get wet or too humid or whatnot uh seeing huge temperature changes basically if it's an indoor bulb this has a 45 year life expectancy um but the, the way they do that is with the actual uh, LED, the diodes themselves, they increase the number, which reduces the excess heat, right? Because what, it, what ends up happening is you increase the number of these LEDs so that you can run them at lower power which is more efficient, generates less waste heat while generating the same amount of light. And that's why these bulbs last actually longer than the other LED bulbs, because you're running them at a lower power. You're not driving the diodes as hard, which is why they don't overheat as much. They don't waste energy as heat, and then they consequently last longer. So you pay a little bit more upfront to pay less in your power bill and pay less overall for the lifetime of the bulb because it just lasts longer. Uh, and then, like I said, though, you know, Philips here is saying, oh, these are our most efficient. 
They're the most efficient that are available in the US domestic market. Why we can't get the ones that are like, like I said, well over like 220, 230 um, uh, lumens per watt, uh, call your congressman. I don't know, of course, with these tariffs, who knows? But I, as far as I understood, you know, Philips is supposed to be an American company. Um, I mean, American as in Hecho in Mexico. Oops. Um, but but <laughs> that being a, all, all joking aside, it is something that I think is important for people to consider, right? Because if you're worried about your power bill going up by getting an EV, consider getting more efficient bulbs. Even if you have uh, efficient bulbs already, chances are there are even more efficient LED bulbs available. And you can just pull the LEDs that you have right now out, put the hyper-efficient ones in, and then just stow your old LEDs in a bulb, you know, in a, in a drawer and save them as, as your basically your replacement bulb or if something goes wrong, right? So what you end up doing is you save, either way you're saving or reducing the electrical, you know, output that you require. Um, like I said, if you're, if you're going from incandescent bulbs for the same amount of lighting, you're talking about an 80 to 90% reduction in power alone. And if you own an electric vehicle and you want to make that sort of connection, if you will, you're driving 25 to 30 to 35,000 miles a year now, um, for free, just because you switched to more efficient LED bulbs that are going to last longer, you know, generate more light for the amount of energy they consume. So it's, I, I feel like it's kind of a win, win, win. Um, you know, I still have some incandescence, like I said, sometimes you might need them for heating, things like that, but just understand you are wasting a lot of power, uh, to generate the same amount of light. And then of course, uh, make sure you get outdoor rated bulbs if you're going to be using them outdoor. Otherwise, they're going to have a significantly shorter lifespan as an LED. But anyway, I, I'd love to hear what you think. What do you think about this idea of, hey, comparing the the electricity you're using with these high efficiency bulbs versus the electricity that you're using now? And of course, how much of the, the stress on the grid and how much uh, grid electricity are you offsetting <laughs> with your EV by you know, using these bulbs, right? How many miles are you able to drive? And then, like I said, anybody here who's maybe in another country or has access to the actual high, high efficiency or ultra high efficiency bulbs. Uh, and like I said, they're from Philips. <laughs> so I know that they're, they're lying about this. You know, what, what's your experience been with them and you know, how, how hard are they to actually get those ultra high efficiency bulbs that could again, almost 30% reduction from these high efficiency bulbs. So uh, anyway, I've been enjoying them. I, they, they've worked well for me and uh, you know, I'm an LED believer now. Um, yeah, I, I saw its light and now I'm a believer. Um, as always, thank you for watching.